welcome to my tutorial for the clove stitch. My name is Lisa Ross and you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations. Right now I'm working on the Spice It Up shawl, which is part of my Live It Up shawl collection, which you can find both on Ravelry and on my website. I will put those links down below. This is the stitch that we're going to be working on today. So this is very similar to the Dahlia stitch, if you are familiar with the Garden Variety Wrap that I released earlier this year. Um, but it's a little bit different, so I'm going to walk you through it. Um, it may be a little difficult to see, so I'm going to try to give you a closer view. And what we have here are, um, it creates little eyelets, little holes in the stitch pattern and you have these elongated stitches on each side and when they're um, spaced like this it creates a really beautiful lace pattern that is easy to work and great for the color block look I was going for with this shawl. I'm going to show you the other sections too just in case you can see it better in the different colors. So these yarns are all minis from Lavender Loon Yarn. And her main color is Oatmeal Stout. This is the darkest one right here. So this is the stitch that we're going to be working on today. This is my first side of the shawl, which I've already blocked. I have it put on hold on these um, interchangeable needles. I just took the needles off, put these ends on. These are the Chalgu interchangeables. And this will be ready to join with the other side once I am ready. All right, so here is my working yarn. I'm on the lightest color on this side, and I'm getting ready to work another row of the clove stitch. So I have right here a row in which, um, or actually it's a, it's a series of four rows, two right side and two wrong side rows that create these little cloves. And so what I want to do now is to put the stitches, the new cloves, in between the existing ones. And if I have been following the pattern correctly, my stitch count should line up and I should be ready to do just that. So let me untangle things here and get ready to work. So in order to get the biased look of this shawl, I need to begin with my knit one and knit two together. So I start with that. My pattern for row seven, which is the row that I'm on right here. Uh, actually, let me check that. Yes, okay, my pattern calls for um, me to be on row seven at this point. I need to knit one, knit two together. Now I'm going to knit four, <clears throat> and you'll see that those are the four stitches that were used for the previous clove stitch. Now I'm ready to begin the next clove stitch. All I need to do on this row is knit two together and SSK. And when I do my SSK, I do a modified SSK. I'm going to show you that. Uh, I'll show you that again in just a minute. I knit four, knit two together, and here's my modified SSK. What I do is I slip the first stitch um, as if to knit, and then I place it back on the left needle, and I work those two together through the back loop. So normally with a slip slip knit, you slip two stitches. I like to only do the first one as it makes um, the, the resulting stitch is more similar to the knit two together than a traditional SSK would be. I continue doing my knit four, and as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that those four stitches that I knit in between are lining up with the previous clove stitch that I made. Oops, knit two together. SSK. Okay, and here I am at the end of my row. So I'm going to knit to the last stitch. I'm going to work my M1R right here. 
This creates the biased fabric by having the increase on one side and the decrease on the other. And I'm ready to turn my work. <clears throat> now the back of this stitch for, um, actually for the entire lace portion through all of the um, lace rows, those clove rows, you're going to work the wrong sides the same way, which is to knit the first two stitches, creating a garter ridge along the side that um, that will make sure that our shawl doesn't curl at the edges. And then I'm going to purl across to the other end. So the wrong side is just knit two, purl to the last two stitches, and then you knit those last two stitches, creating that garter edge on either side and just purl stitches. Now your stitch count does change because you decreased two stitches for every clove that you created in the first, um, on that first row. So your stitch count will be a little bit different. <clears throat> However, um, we're going to be reinserting those stitches in our next right side row, which is on, um, for me, I'm on row nine. All right, I'm at my last two stitches. I knit two and I'm ready to go back to the right side. Let me just get a little bit more yarn out. <clears throat> okay, so on this next side, we are going to be working some knit one longs, and I will show you how to do that. So we are beginning with our knit two to continue that garter edge. I am going to, oh, I'm sorry, knit one, knit two together at the edge. Sorry about that. We have to make our biased fabric. And now I'm going to be knitting three to get over to my stitches that I worked on the previous row. So what I have here, you may be able to see the knit two together is right there. You can see those two stitches on top of each other and <clears throat> my SSK. Now, what I have between those stitches are two bars and I want to go underneath that second bar. So right here, hopefully you can see that. I have one bar two bars and then between the second and third bar there's a hole and I want to go right inside this hole. Let me see if I can show you a closer view. So I've got my first stitch, the second stitch, and then right below the second stitch I'm going to go into that hole right there. <clears throat> so I go into the hole, I yarn over to pull up a loop, like this. And I want that, that loop to be nice and long. I want it to match up with the stitches on either side. So if I pull it too tight, I'm going to end up with a weird looking, it's not going to be a long stitch and it needs to be just long enough. Um, you also don't want to make it too long, which is actually kind of hard to do because you're limited <laughs> on how far you pull it. But you want it to be um, just about the right tension and it may take a couple tries to get it right. Now I'm going to knit two. And now this is the hardest part of the stitch. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit of practice. I want to go into that same hole where I pulled the previous long stitch. So let me see if I can show you closer. So you can see that this long stitch right here is kind of tugging on that hole. That's the hole that I wanna go into. I'm gonna go into that same hole where I went before, <clears throat> which is right here. Now the way I do it is to hold my stitches with my um, left, sorry, my right hand with my right um, index finger, go into the hole, yarn over and pull up a yarn. <clears throat> 
and I again want to make that stitch nice and long to match up with the other stitches. And that is all there is to do to create this clove stitch. Now on the purl side, I do need to make sure that I hit those stitches in order, that they don't um, overlap one another or, and get mixed up. So let me show you that one more time. I'm going to knit four to get to the next place. And again, I'm just double checking, do these line up with my previous clove? And yes, they do. And now I'm ready to make my clove stitch, my, my knit one longs. So I've got this hole. I've got one bar, two bars. I'm going into the hole between the second and third bar. So you wanna go into that hole right between the second and third bar. I'm going into it with my right needle, so I'm holding onto the other stitches. Um, if you are an English style knitter, you may have to adjust or do things a little bit differently. Um, I yarn over, I pull up that loop, I make it long, I check to make sure, yes, it's in the right hole. I knit two, which are those previous decreased stitches, and now I'm doing my knit one long into that same hole right there. Pull up, make my knit one long, and that clove is complete. Now, if you find it difficult to do uh, the way that I'm showing you, I'm going to show you some other options. Now, this is thanks to some knitters and their clever knitting tricks that they used for the Dahlia stitch. So here I'm doing my, I did my first knit one long, I'm doing my knit two, those are the easy stitches to work, and now comes the tricky one. Okay, so it can be difficult to go into that hole with your right needle, and so you may find it easier to go through with your left needle. <laughs> I do not find it easier. <laughs> But to be fair, I've had a lot of practice the other way. Scoop up that loop and position it on in the correct, um, so that it's positioned the correct way as if it was a knit stitch. All right, so let me take that off and show you again. You're going to go into that same hole. You're going to scoop up that yarn and you're going to need to position it so that the right leg is in front just as you would with any normal knit stitch. Okay, so that would be another way to work it. Let me do my knit four. And now I am at my uh, place for my first knit one long. The first one's easy to work, I'm going to do that. And knit two. All right, so now here's a different way to work it. I have a crochet hook. I'm going to take that crochet hook, go into that hole where my first knit one long was. I'm going to yarn over the crochet hook, scoop it through. I've got my long stitch and I need to position it so that the right leg of the stitch is in front just as you would with a regular knit stitch. It should be oriented the same way um, with the right leg in front. So I knit four. I will show you the crochet method one more time. You could also, if you are having trouble doing it with this first stitch, um, you could definitely do that. I, I feel like that first one is pretty easy to work, but you know, to each their own, everyone's got their own knitting style and preferences. Here is my crochet hook into that hole, scoop it up and position it onto the needle. And then I just need to even out the tension, make sure it looks correct. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the end of this row, finishing those clothes as I go.
Okay, I'm up to my very last stitch. This is where I work my M1R. And I am ready to turn to the back. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you the wrong side row just so that you can uh, make sure that you're doing this correctly. Now the wrong side rows, again, we're going to knit the first two stitches um, and the last two stitches, and then all of the rest are purl. So these are the easy, normal purl stitches right here. And now I'm coming up to Um, did I already knit it or purl it? No, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. This is it. Um, so my first long stitch, you'll see that it, it kind of wants to overlap that second stitch. The, they form like this cluster right here. And I need to be sure that I'm purling them in the correct order. So that long stitch, you'll see it looks different than a normal stitch because it's kind of coming down um, on these stitches below. So I need to knit the long, or excuse me, purl the long stitch first. Then I purl those two stockinette stitches. And then there's my last long one and I purl it. So they should come up in the correct order, but it's just something to be aware of, you know, if you tossed your knitting into a bag and things get out of sorts, um, you know, the next time you pick it up, you may just need to make sure that you are purling those stitches in the correct order. All right, I'm coming up on the last two stitches. I knit two to finish off that row. And it is, those clove stitches are complete. You can see I have these, this beautiful floral pattern um, as they are creating these diamond shapes. I'll show you on this other section. Once you've got a bunch of them, it creates this diamond shaped fabric. It creates these beautiful little eyelets which are enhanced when the shawl is blocked and you can stretch those out and really open up that eyelet lace. Let me pull out the other finished one that has already undergone blocking. You can see this beautiful fabric, this wonderful drape, and it is going to spice up your shawl. Again, this is the Spice It Up shawl. You can find links in the um, notes below. You can find me on Ravelry on Instagram, Paper Daisy, um, Paper Daisy One on Ravelry, Paper Daisy Creations on Instagram. Um, and again, my name is Lisa K. Ross, and I hope to see you um, and your knitting very soon.